Hello, this is Mark from My Keys to Music. Thanks for joining me on this video. Have you ever wanted to find out or discover the exact specifications and all the parameter settings of your programs on your Nord keyboard? Well, if you have a Nord Stage 2 or a Nord Stage 3, I've got a special application that I want to bring to your attention. It's called the File Viewer for the Nord Stage 2 and the Nord Stage 3. What this allows you to do is you can take a program from either of those keyboards, load it into the application, and the application will automatically discover all the components and parameters and settings for everything that makes that program work. So what could you do with this and why do we care? Well, one obvious thing is if you have a Nord Stage 2 and you are looking to purchase, or maybe you already have purchased a Nord Stage 3, there is no quick way to automatically convert those programs, those saved programs, to the Nord Stage 3. You actually have to manually tweak all those knobs and resave those programs one by one. Well, having this file viewer makes it a lot easier. Now, another thing that I've personally used it for is I've used it on a video or two already, and I plan to use more of this, where I create a sound from a famous song and I have to, one by one, show you guys every little setting and we go through every knob and every button one by one. It's sort of painstaking and takes some time. Instead, I can just show this exact layout in this format and you can see all the settings on a single page or a single view. Makes it a lot easier to follow along. The program allows you to save PDFs or you could just take a screenshot. It's really quick and the best news of all, it's completely free. It was contributed by uh, members of our community, of our Nord family, our Nord community, if you will. So they've done a really good job with this. They have it for the Stage 2 and Stage 3. I'm hoping that down the road, maybe they'll make it available for other keyboards as well. But for now, this is really a golden gem for those who are really passionate about saving or preserving or even documenting the programs that we've all worked hard on. Uh, whether it be for a gig or for just sharing information. This is another tool in your tool belt to help the life of a Nord keyboardist. So now let's take a close-up look of exactly how this works. The best thing to do, in my opinion, is to just open up a browser, go to Chrome versus Safari. I'm on my Mac, so I tend to use Safari, but if you use Chrome, it's actually a little bit more compatible with the way they've designed this program with a couple of features, or more specifically the one feature where you can export the results to a PDF, that works better in Chrome. So that's why I've chosen Chrome here. And I'm simply gonna go to Google and do a straight on search for Nord File Viewer. And once you do that search, it should just pop up as the first listing, as of this video, that's where it is, the first listing. And here we are on the actual website, File Viewer for Nord Stage. I'll take you through this and we'll take a look at some sample files here in a second, but let me just show you the top navigation. We've got the home page, we've got a page for privacy. We've got a page for offline. And what that really means is the offline version of this application is completely available for the Mac OS, Windows 10, or even Linux, if you can believe that. So you get your cake and eat it too. You can convert these files any way you see fit. If you are more comfortable using an application on your computer, that's fine. If you want to just stick to the browser here, this is fine too. So uh, they even went so far as to put, you know, the App Store listing together for this program, File Viewer for Nord Stage. This is an official App Store listing right here, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's the offline version. And then there's the About section. And I think it does uh, warrant a quick minute or two to talk about this. First of all, this File Viewer for the Nord Stage is free, and it's a handmade application developed by Nord User Forum members. And then more details here. And then if you click there, you'll actually go to the Nord user forum and you can read all about it. There's already 12 plus pages of people responding to this. And there's a lot of excitement around what this can do. And the community has really been responsive and actually participating in its development along the way. They also clarify here that this is not a sponsored or even endorsed thing from Clavia. It's not their application. It's, it's unique to the community. And Nord or Clavia, they really don't have anything to do with the creation of this. Although they did give it their blessing uh, in a loose, casual sort of way by saying, hey, you know, this is cool. We, you know, go proceed. Um, 
Then the contributors. There are two main contributors. Uh, Christian, who I believe is uh, the person who does most of the development, and Andreas as well. I'm not sure uh, what their exact roles are, but if you click on this information here, you'll be navigated to what I believe is their LinkedIn contact page. So if you want to get more information, it's all there for you. Um, and then a quick disclaimer. So that's the about page. It's rare that you get somebody to do an application that works so well for the web. Rarer still that that same developer makes offline versions for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. I mean, that's, that's almost like a full-blown software company would do something like that, not just a community member. So it, this sort of effort is uh, something not to be dismissed. All right, let's take a look at how this works. I've got three example files here, and we'll take each one and show you what it does. First one, I have a Nord Stage 3 program file for a Lyle Mays keyboard sound. This is uh, a sound that I created and actually did a video about. So let me click load here, and we're going to load that Lyle Mays sound from the Nord Stage 3. It's a program file. And that's it. I'm just going to click open, and immediately it comes up and dissects that. So let me just take a quick view of what's going on here, and I'll show you what's happening. So first thing it presents is the ability to load and export. Load is sort of a repeat of what I just did. It's another way of quickly loading another program file or a synth file. Export takes this particular file and exports it to a PDF that becomes available in my downloads folder. I already downloaded it earlier, but here it is. This is the Lyle May sound in PDF form. And once it's in PDF form, you have the added ability to take it with you or archive it in a folder or email it to somebody or print it. So it's a nice um, capability because we all know printing from a browser is lackluster, but printing from a PDF is a lot better. So that's a nice feature here. And that was something they added along the way. So let me break this down so you can see. We've got A13, that's the bank and the location for where that program exists on my Nord Stage 3 at the time that I've exported this program to the desktop. Of course, it's got the Lyle Mays sound, that's the name of the program. Below that, it shows that it's for the Nord Stage 3, and the file format is the NS3F format, version 3.04. And the category of this program is lead, meaning it's a lead synth sound. To the right of that, we have the master clock information at 120 BPM, which happens to be the default. On this program, I'm not using any kind of master clock synchronization. So uh, if I was, you might see a different tempo there, but traditionally you're going to see 120 there. Any transpose information would be listed here. You'll note that the word transpose is in a lighter gray. And so is the word split and dual organ or dual KB and organ. They're all in light gray, meaning that these are currently not being used. Those features are not turned on within this program. So that's why they're light gray. And you're going to see light gray throughout this description here. So panel A, we have the synth as the prominent thing. And the reason why the synth is the prominent thing listed is because when you go to Lyle Mays on the stage three, the synth is turned on. The organ and the piano are turned off, so they are not emphasized here at all. So we have the synth. The level for the dB adjustment is a 0, 0.0. The KB zone is all four indicated. N note that this is not a split, so all four zones would be default um, available anyway. There's no octave adjustment. Here is information about the pitch stick or the sustain pedal. Uh, which means that they're both on in this case. That's why they're listed here. Then we have it in voice for its poly mode for voice versus um, mono mode or legato mode. And if I did have mono or legato, the glide rate would be illuminated and then indicated here. Unison 1 is on. Vibrato is assigned to the aftertouch. That's what the AT stands for. And the KB hold is not turned on. So that's why it's light gray. Of course, here's my oscillator configuration. I'm using the classic square along with the fine detune and zero semitones on the detune. Then the oscillator section, I'm using the classic. Fast attack is off. That's why it's in light gray. The control amount is 0 0.03. The mod amount is 8.3. The filter is an LP12. Uh, the KB track is one third. We have the LFO at zero 
and the velocity mod amount at zero as well. The frequency cutoff is at 554 hertz. Resonance is at zero. So all these details are spelled out here, black and white, very cle clean and easy to see. Um, just terrific to have it all on one page in this format. The LFO rate, the wave triangle for the shape of the LFO, the master clock is not on or not used. Mod envelope is 61, 61, and 3 with no velocity. The amp envelope is 19 with sustain uh, for the decay. And the release of 313 milliseconds velocity off. Now all the effects will show up here to the right of all this information. The only effects I have are reverb and delay. So for the delay, we're at 451 milliseconds. No master clock, no ping pong. The filter is uh, bypass, and the analog mode is not illuminated. I do have the feedback at 2.4 and the mix at 2.7. The reverb here is the stage one with the amount of five and the bright setting. It even puts the output options too. So right now the output is coming out of channel one and two or port one and two or jack one and two, however you want to look at that. And the sub is off. There's no sub output happening. Now, as I mentioned before, it does list panel B, but because panel B is not invoked or not turned on when I switch to this program on the stage three, it's going to be completely dimmed. Not so light that you can't see it, but dimmed to let you know that it's not turned on by default. But this is really important because in some situations, you'll go to a program and you'll start the song with panel A. Then as the song moves along, you might flip over to panel B for the solo part and then back to panel A. So you might still want to know what's on panel B and what's happening there under the hood so that you can set that up on your side. But it just means that it's not turned on. So I like the fact that they indicate both here, both the fact that all the settings are still visible, but they're slightly grayed out because it's not active. All right, I won't go through the panel B but I will show you a couple other features here which are important to note. Two features as of this recording, we have a smart feature. If I turn on the smart feature, what happens is it will indicate items in red that are different than the default settings if you initialized the synth engine or if you started with a brand new program, what would the settings be? And if they are different, turn them red. And that's what we have here. So anything that's red is different than the default. You can see, that indicated. That's the smart option. Then the other option here is the all. Now take a look at this. When I turn on the all, it exposes all three sound engines. It exposes the organ engine, the piano engine, and of course the synth engine is still exposed. And you'll see that the organ and piano are dimmed out, meaning they are not turned on. Again, just as I mentioned earlier, you may want to know what your organ settings are in the event that you turn on the organ engine when you have this program selected, because you might start the song with just the synth, you might move along and turn on the organ later, well, you wanna know what those settings are too. So using this all option lets you see everything under the hood, uh, regardless of whether it's invoked or on or not. So even the extern section is listed here as well, which is a nice feature to be able to depict that extern, um, the, the settings on the extern. All right, that's good. So that's for both panels. Lots and lots and lots of information there, exposed in a way that, in my opinion, is very easy to read, very easy to understand, very easy to follow along, especially once you kind of understand what you're looking at. So that's the Lyle May sound. I'm going to now load another program. This time we're going to load uh, Girls Have Fun, which I assume is Girls Want to Have Fun from Cindy Lauper. This sound was given to me by somebody else. Uh, and it's a Nord Stage 2 program so we can see um, the differences there for this particular sound we can see immediately that oh it is using organ and it's using um, on panel a and then on panel b synth is used and the extern is used on panel b and why do we know that because these are the things that are brought to the top they're emphasized and they're not grayed out so you can clearly see that those are turned on when the program is being used for for this sound so that shows you some differences there I won't go through all of this. Well, I will spend a second talking about the organ since that's a little different. You'll see the usual level in the KB zone and notice how it shows the KB zone here on the left split. And you'll see that it also says the organ uh, draw bar numbers uh, listed, you know, 00111111 and so forth. 
along with uh, the routing options here. Again, this is for the Nord Stage 2, so its offerings are slightly different than the Stage 3, but they compensate and handle that beautifully here, and we can see all the effects on the right side listed like this when it comes to compressor or reverb. All right, and again, if I put on the Smart option, it'll show me in red the differences between that and the default, and then the All shows everything that is possible within that program on the Stage 2. Now would be a good time to bring to your attention some more amazing details with this program. Here I have a pedal steel guitar that has morph values for the volume, so the control pedal is assigned to the level. In this case, the wheel is assigned to the frequency amount, starting at 21 kilohertz. And then over here, I have the aftertouch assigned to the reverb amount. Then here you'll notice a subtle detail. It shows on effect two that I'm using chorus one. You'll note that there are two rates here. One is 2.5 and the other one in parentheses is 32. As I hover over that, a tooltip appears telling me that the second value is equivalent to what it would be on the Nord Stage 2. This is especially handy if you find yourself creating programs between the Nord Stage 2 and 3, since those values are calibrated differently. You may have also noticed that in this case, the sample is not found, and that's because I'm using a custom homemade sample for the pedal steel guitar sound, so in that case you won't see a sample being found. However, if you use any of the samples available on the Nord website, you will see the official name here. Incidentally, a point of interest is that the sample name is not actually stored in the program file, which is why you don't see it listed here when a custom sample is used. The developers reversed engineered it so that if you're using an official sample from Nord, they are able to reverse engineer the name and display it here in the program viewer. All right, let's look at one more example here and we will load a synth setting or a synth file and I'm using flute bell pad. Let's open that up. So if you don't know what a synth setting is, it's a setting on the Nord stage that allows you to see all the different components of the synth engine used and it's a separate location. For example, if you had something that where you wanted to use a Mellotron sample and you wanted it tweaked in a certain way with the release a certain way and maybe the oscillator configuration added to that sample, you could save that and you could call it Mellotron Favorite or Mellotron 1. And then you can use that particular synth preset across multiple programs. So it's a way of taking all your synth settings and collecting them into a group or a synth patch, and then you can reuse that synth patch across multiple programs. So that's what that file is, and this particular program, this application here, depicts that as well. So this is the synth uh, for the flute bell pad, and we can see here that we are using the voice poly, so some of the same stuff here. The, here's the oscillator configuration. We also see that it is, in fact, a sample, sample 84, which is NOR Flute, BR Mono version 3.01. It's got this filter configuration, the LFO, and so forth. So that is a kind of a miniature version of the synth engine as a whole. But if you want that information, it's there for you, and it's nice to be able to have that if you want to recreate those synth presets. So hopefully this video was a help to introduce you to the Nord File Viewer. Feel free to share with others who might be interested. I know for me, this is a unique offering and it's something that is one of a kind, but very helpful. Please feel free to check out the description below this video for any updates. I'll also put a link to the actual website where you can get this information that you saw today, or you'll have the option to download the individual applications for your computer directly with that same link as well. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.